Hello guys and welcome back. Today we're revisit revisiting the mono whitelist that I was running. So I wanted to make adjust it and make it viable to play on the ladder. And as I played a bunch of games, I started kind of finding out that the main decks I'm running up against right now is Orzov with the creatures that deal damage to you when, they, when they're sacrificed. Uh, there's like a red and green control list running around, etc, etc. So without further ado, basically the main changes are where you just run one Conclave Tribunal and two Settle the Wreckages because there can be pretty important for most of the meta decks we come up against. The problem is we can't add more than that into this deck. I've tried lots of variations. And to keep this deck consistent, you really can't get more, rid of more than three cards or the rest of the deck becomes pretty inconsistent to play on curve like it needs to as a tempo deck. So still two Hiller's Hawks, two Leonin Vanguards, three Ajani's Welcomes, two Legion's Landings, four Ajani's Pride Mates, four Tide Takers, one Dawn of Hope, two Responda Angels, three Banalish Marshals, two Gideon Blackbades, three History of Banalias, four Gideon's Companies, one Conclave Tribunal, two Settle the Wreckages, two God Eternal Alketras, and one Gideon the Oath Sworn. We run two of these, by the way, because we are a tempo deck. If we were not a tempo deck, we would run one if we were a control deck, but as a tempo deck, having her on curve on five is very, 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 very powerful. Gideon's Company is still insane. It still creates really good board states and overwhelms our oppo opponent pretty quick if they don't have an answer for it. The games I chose to record are kind of some of the more clunky matches because I wanted I wanted you guys to see the other side of this deck. I wanted you to see the, the side where you don't just curve out perfect and be able to annihilate your opponent in four turns. I wanted to see I wanted you guys to see how it plays when the games last a little bit longer or things don't quite go as planned, etc. etc. So without further ado, I'm gonna get into the games and watch you let you watch the matches. I hope you guys enjoy. Alright, so let's see how this deck fares now that the mate has settled, settled a little bit. We have a pretty good starting curve here. Johnny's welcome into a Johnny's Pride Mates. Old but good. So this guy's going to be trying to draw cards. Let's uh, try to shut that down the best we can. Alrighty, evidently our opponent did not like our board state, and I chose to concede that one. This deck's been really powerful, guys. Um, it has its weaknesses and it has its flaws, but it's consistent, and that's what I like about it. I don't know if it's going to have a, as high of a win rate as, say, like my Esper Control List, but the games are also, you know two to three times faster, so it might balance out if you're trying to grind the ladder. So this guy is on some type of control list, it looks like, so we're going to try to push damage quickly. So uh, Banalish Marshall will be the play of choice for that turn. Ritual of Soot would be really bad for us right now. Cast Down would do some harm too. Right here we have a decision to make, do we play Legion's Landing and try to flip it, or do we try to get more damage through? We choose to try to get more damage through. We made that decision because he's a control deck, and we feel like getting the damage through as quickly as possible is our best option at winning. So we know one of our Banalish Marshals is going to get cast down, probably as soon as we cast the Legion's Landing, I would imagine. We're not going to play the Leon and Vanguard just in case he has some type of board wipe right now. God Eternal Kefnit's going to slow us down quite a bit. It's worth flipping the Legion's Landing probably here pretty soon. 
So we're gonna give it one more turn to see what he develops. So we draw into a land, we didn't draw into anything better than we would have prior, so now's the time to flip it and at least be able to generate some tokens every turn. At 4 life, the one token could be the difference between winning and losing a turn, so... This game not going quite as smoothly as the one before, we didn't curve out quite as good. What's really been saving our behind this match was the Banalish Marshals, who let us get ahead tempo-wise pretty well. Johnny's Welcome, not the best to draw for that moment. But we did flip our, our Legion's Landing. So we'll keep generating tokens. So we draw another land. Top decking those three lands was what sealed our fate. If we could have curved into some creatures, we probably could have won that game, but curving into land at that crucial moment was the deciding factor. Not sure what our opponent is on yet. You would guess mono white, but okay. Two adult vanguards and a guy that taps our creatures is an interesting list to say that the least. Don't know if playing his adult vanguards without a target was the smartest thing he could have done. Or his guys that give his other guys uh, indestructible. Well, we finally have a play. Try to get a Gideon's Company down. Maybe a Conclave Tribunal coming out to take care of it, we don't know, but either way we've got to apply some pressure, and if he does play a Conclave Tribunal, that is one less creature he's going to play. Instead he opts for a venerated Loxodome, and then concedes, which is very strange to me. Guy had a pretty good board state, not quite sure why he conceded. Must not have had a way to take care of our creature and realized it was going to be bigger than what you could get through. Decent curve here. Legion's Landing and the Tithe Taker into history is pretty strong. Let's see if we face a Fodder Reader. Nope, a tap land. Bodes well for us, because History of Benalia would have been the uh, for sure choice. There's the Thought Erasure. Tapland creating a lot of problems for our opponent right now. Cry will come out. Let's put our opponent on a one turn timer. So here we're just kind of on a race to get the last 5 damage through as quickly as possible. We're not going to attack the Teferi, we are going to go face. If he, Our opponent made a huge misplay there. He should have returned our Adanto, or our Johnny's Pride Mate to hand. He did not. We're assuming he probably has some form of life gain right now. He does, so we'll go ahead and attack the Teferi instead. We made that decision, so at first we planned on attacking face, and then we kind of realized and made the decision we needed to attack the Teferi, because why else would he make the play that he played? We realized it would have been a huge misplay, and that's why I talked about it, and then we're like, oh, you know what, It's he must have done that for a reason. So we kind of had a 50-50 chance, we were debating on, okay, is, it, is he bluffing, or is it a real play? We decided that it was probably a real play. We attack in a way that makes sure his Teferi dies no matter what.
So our opponent is very persistent. We may end up losing this one. Body Razor won't hit anything, unfortunately for him. It is good to see that we are playing against an Esper control list, though. Because it's good to see these decks against the meta decks. We're gonna go ahead and draw the cards. Malish Marshall doesn't hit a counterspell coming down, and that will be the win for us. So I hope you guys are enjoying these. I, I can... I just wanted to... I kind of... I didn't really cherry-pick good matches. I just kind of cherry-picked the matches that show the strengths and weaknesses of the deck. So... Yeah. I hope that it's... Uh, realistic for you, so that if you guys build the list, you kind of know what you're getting into if you decide to play it on the ladder. The Onan Vanguard into a Tithe Taker into... So, we're debating... Here's the thing, we... we sometimes we won't play the Le Leonin Vanguard first, but as we're on the play, we will. If we were on the draw, we probably would not. Our opponent choosing to uh, attack rather than kill our Leonin Vanguard is a very interesting choice. We'll put the Tithe Taker down, just so it, when we play the Ajani's next turn, we have three creatures on board, unless he kills our Leonin Vanguard. He didn't kill it last time, so we're not sure if he's going to kill it this turn. He destroys the Tithe Taker over the Leonin Vanguard, which feels like a misplay to me, and he's going to get punished for it. So kind of cool, we went up against Esper Control, we won, now we're up against Mono Red, let's see how we fare in this one. These are the matches that are the most important when judging a deck's strengths. So I would assume he goes ahead and sacks his Fanatical Firebrand to kill our Leonin Vanguard, but our opponent doesn't do it before the card drops. Maybe he's new to magic and he doesn't understand the order of operations. Vyashino Pyromancer, these cards are not going to be enough to get through our defenses at the current moment. Our board's pretty wide now, which bo usually bodes pretty bad for Mono Red. So Steamkin, Steamkin comes out, we know we're on the timer. God Eternal Kefnet is a... or God Eternal Aketra is a beautiful draw right now. Don't think Mono Red has any possible way to get through this board state, so we should win. So, so far, when it matters most, the deck has been pulling through. So, when it comes to uh, the meta decks, This sounds kind of slow. So we see white and blue, black. So here we are up against a another Esper control list. This is a very important match to figure out the weaknesses of this deck against it. Takes Gideon Blackway, which was the correct choice for him. So our opponent makes the correct play right there. 
We opt for the Adjoni's Welcome over the Resplendent because 4 mana in Esper is generally a some form of removal. And our opponent plays Ashiok and telegraphs to us that he is in fact a discard Esper list. So now we feel a little bit safe for putting our threats down. We see a Thought Erasure. A Splendid Angel goes bye bye. Our opponent is still in the mill plan. Land is not what we wanted to see right there. We will get quite a bit of damage in right here. We will be uh, too off lethal, unfortunately. Another land top deck. Not boding well for us. Let's see if he has an answer for our token. He does. Another land drop does not bode well for us at all. So I, I lowered the lands to this deck in 23 from 24 because I, I found out that when this happens to us in the late game, it doesn't work out very, it doesn't bode well, very well for us. So uh, I, I lessened one of the lands. We can't go too much lower than 23 because we are running a, a six drop in the deck. And we'll go ahead and concede that one. No point in continuing that game. I think we had it if we didn't top deck the three or four lands at the last turn, but uh, we had a, we hit a land pocket at a inopportune time. Not sure what we're up against at this point. I haven't seen that card being played too often. Maybe some type of spirit list. Johnny's Pride Mate on curve is pretty well. We're actually looking pretty good for this match so far. Okay, a high alert deck. It's pretty cool. So lots of procs on our Johnny's Pride Mates. We might just win this one the good old fashioned way without any new cards. So we are up against a Tribal Spirit deck running High Alert. We're going to save the Gideon's Company, drop down the Legion's Landing to kind of get some ramp going. Let's present our opponent with Lethal, so he has to block one. Opponent chooses to triple block one card. Seems strange to me. Might think we have a combat trick up our sleeve. Oh, he has a con combat trick up his sleeve. Our opponent can't attack because it will cause him a lot of headaches when we counterattack. One thing I've noticed about this deck, if you're running against any type of opponent who is on a non-removal plan, so they're on like an, like an aggro or temple plan where they're just trying to uh, play threats and kill you without any thought to removal, we generally win those matches. And we hit the concede out of our opponent. Is it Guild Mage? Let's see if he is an actual Is It deck. I've played around with the Is It list uh, a little bit since the new set came out. 
Don't know how I feel about it quite yet. I feel like it's something that's definitely can be like a tier 2 deck, but I don't see it being a tier 1 deck currently. That doesn't mean it's not possible and hasn't someone hasn't found a way, but myself at least, with my experimenting, I haven't been able to create a tier 1 deck with it. So our opponent no answer for our Gideon's Company could not bode too great for him. Here you're going to see the inclusion of Subtle Wreckage and uh, how good it can be in a match. Opponent Lightning Strikes are Banalish Marshall. Turns are getting his company to hand, so he does slow us down a little bit. We'll replay it. And God Eternal Kefnit, or God Eternal Oketra. Sorry, I keep thinking of the other, the green one. God Eternal uh, Oketra can come down next turn, which will be a great tempo play. So our opponent drawing cards right now is pretty good for us. He does have two mana open, which could possibly be in essence scatter next turn if he doesn't use them. Three, so now we're facing a full-on counter spell. But our opponent chooses to light up the stage, which will open up a turn for us to play God Eternal Aketra. We'll get seven damage through. We do present lethal next turn if he cannot remove a threat. Our opponent full of a lot of removal and draw so far. So he gets rid of both of our cards. We will go ahead and uh, drop the Tithe Taker and our Dawn of Hope. Try to gain some card advantage back. Beacon bolts the Tithe Taker. Evidently, he does not want to be locked out of playing things at the end of my turn. Right now we're prioritizing card draw because we need to burn him out of his endless supply of beacon bolts. We have a hard decision to make here. We decided to drop the God Eternal Oketra. Not necessarily like we're going to block with it, but it sucks up another removal from his hand. So God Eternal Oketra is coming in pretty handy here. It's forcing a lot of removal from him, and then just coming right back the next turn. Here we can't play Gideon, unfortunately, because we're worried about how many instants and sorceries he can get thrown into his graveyard and we don't want to get OTK'd in one turn. So if he doesn't have enough to present lethal we will create a token, if he does we will settle the wreckage. We will settle the wreckage anyways after second thought. Johnny's Pride Mate is actually pretty good. I'll allow us to proc our Dawn of Hope and draw some more cards. He's at too high of a life total to be trying to race him with damage right now. So we're more prioritizing card draw at the moment so we can try to snowball him later on. Again, prioritizing card draw, so we play the uh, small threats first.
It was a smarter choice to go wide here as well rather than playing God Eternal Oketra because we we're like 90% sure he has another removal spell for it. So this still keeps a threat on the board. Sure. Our opponent with a lot of removal, but not many ways to do anything else so far. So we'll just keep drawing cards. Because removal will eventually run out if we keep doing this. We don't play the Leon in Vanguard because we want to combo it with God Eternal Aketra next turn. That was why we made the decision for that play, and our opponent concedes. Thanks for watching everyone, I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, and as always, enjoy life.